I'm going to read with you uh, a little portion from the Bible. Uh, I've got a few headings that I want to speak to you about. I want to speak to you about a man called the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, lots of us have heard about the Lord Jesus Christ. We, uh, I live in England. Lots of you will live in Wales. Uh, lots of us in the UK have heard of the Lord Jesus Christ, often spoken about at Christmas time, often spoken about at Easter. Uh, yet I want to speak to uh, us about uh, how he died uh, and the importance of the death of Christ. I want, if you've got a Bible, I'm going to, if you don't have a Bible, that's fine. I'm just going to read a few portions of the Word of God and I'm going to read uh, from the Epistle of the Hebrews and chapter 2. Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 14 says this, For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also likewise partook of the same, that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death, that is the devil, and deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. For verily he took not on him the nature of angels, but he took on him the seed of Abraham. And I'm going to turn to Galatians, please. Galatians chapter 4. Galatians chapter 4 and verse 4. And it says this. When the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth his son, made of a woman, made under the law to redeem them that were under the law. And then I'm going to turn to... <clears throat> Uh, Luke chapter 23, please. Luke chapter 23. <clears throat> For a final reading. Luke's account of the gospel. And chapter 23. And verse 33 says this. And when they were come to the place, which is called Calvary, there they crucified him. When they were come to the place which is called Calvary, there they crucified him. And we trust that God will bless the reading of his word this afternoon. Uh, when you come to the book of the Hebrews, I've just started reading through the book of the Hebrews and I uh, was really enjoying uh, the contrast, the great contrast that there is between chapter one and chapter two. When you come to the book of the Hebrews, chapter uh, one, uh, is unlike the, a lot of the other epistles in the Bible, because lots of the other epistles and the books of the Bible, they start by saying, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, or Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ to Timothy, uh, or to somebody, or to a group of Christians somewhere. But the Hebrew epistle doesn't start like that. In fact, there's been uh, a few discussions as to who really did write the book of the Hebrews. Uh, but I believe that the book of the Hebrews, the author, is hidden from us because the person that is in focus is the Lord Jesus Christ himself. The, the author really wants us to focus on him. And when you come to chapter one, you find the greatness of the person of Christ. You find expressions like this, uh, that in times past, God spoke to the fathers by the prophets, but he's, he's now spoken to us in these last days through his son. Uh, and this son, the Lord Jesus Christ, he's appointed heir of all things. He's the one that made the world. He's the express image of his person he upholds all things by the word of his power and as you come on down through chapter one of of hebrews uh, you'll find that all these old testament quotations which really give you the credentials of christ the person that he is and how god views him and the place and the position and the preeminence that he has given him and yet the shock is when you come to chapter two you read a verse like this but we see Jesus, who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death. And you find one who is high and lofty and the eternal one and the one who makes God known and the one who, by whom God has spoken to this world in a final revelation of his person. And, and yet in chapter two, you find that same person, the Lord Jesus Christ. You read this expression that he tasted death for every man. He tasted death for every man. And so you, you would ask the question, well, why? Why is it that this one, the Lord Jesus Christ, the one who was so great, would come and die and taste death? Well, I want to think with you just for a few moments here uh, about 
uh, the way in which Christ died. I want to think about how he came at an appointed time, how he died at an expected time, how he died at an appointed place, and how he died in an expected way. And we trust that uh, God will bless you as you listen to uh, the preaching of the gospel. You know, the Lord Jesus Christ came at an appointed time. There was a point in time when God, in the plan of eternity, knew that his son would enter into earth. He would come from glory, from being the subject of angel song, and he would come and be born in a manger and would walk around amongst men. He, he was a man amongst men, and yet now he would not, no longer be the song of the angels in heaven, but eventually he would become the song of the drunkard on the cross of Calvary. Uh, and the Lord Jesus came at an appointed time. You know, it was no shock. It was no surprise to God uh, when at the, the point in time when the Lord Jesus would come to this earth. You know, the Bible tells us this. It says, when the fullness of the time was come, just at the right time, just when it was exactly planned, Christ came into the world. He came to redeem us from the curse of the law. You know, 1 Timothy in chapter 1 tells us this. It tells us the reason that Jesus Christ came into this world. If Galatians tells us that he came into the world at the right time, just, just when God had planned it to happen, well, Timothy tells us this. It tells us that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. The reason that the Lord Jesus Christ died, my friend, as you listen to the gospel today, is so that you might have life. The one who was the very source of life, he made life. He upholds all things by the word of his power. He created things just by speaking them into existence. He breathed into man's nostrils the breath of life and man became a living soul. This one was the very source of life and yet he died. So that we, who are dead in our trespasses and sins, as the Bible in Ephesians tells us, we are dead in our trespasses and sins, but we can have life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. God wants to give you everlasting life. But the great cost of salvation, the great cost of salvation was the death of God's own son. Christ came at an appointed time. Not only did Christ come at an appointed time, but Christ died an expected time. He died at an expected time. Do you know as you would go through John's gospel and there's four uh, gospel writers and they all give an account of the life of the Lord Jesus. Well they all have their own different way that they, uh, they explain the, 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 the life of the Lord Jesus and they have their own, their own different style as they look at from different angles the Lord Jesus, the Son of God. Or John as you would read through his epistle you would read that he measures things in days. John, as he writes his, his, uh, his gospel, sorry, he measures things in days. And you come across expressions like this, the next day or the day following or the third day there was a marriage in Cana of Galilee or the same day. And, and John really, at the start and the opening of his gospel, he's interested in what the Lord does each day. And he's following him through days. But as you come through John's gospel, you hear start to hear expressions that are not about the dates. Now they're about hours. And John slows down from measuring things in days and he now starts measuring the life of the Lord Jesus in hours. And he says in John chapter, he writes in John chapter 12, the words of the Lord Jesus. What shall I say? This is what the Lord Jesus said. Father, save me from this hour. For this cause came I to this hour. There was an hour in, in, the, in the Lord Jesus Christ's life, that he came to do something in. And that hour, he came to be the judgment, uh, to be uh, the price for sin. He came to be the saviour. He came that he might give his life a ransom for many. John chapter 17 says this, Father, 
the hour is come. The hour is come. This hour that John has now been sort of uh, pushing and emphasizing that then there's an hour coming when the Lord Jesus Christ is going to go forward and he's going to go uh, and be that price for sin, that payment for sin. The hour is now come. This is now in contrast to all those other times in John's gospel where, where the, the Lord would say, my hour is not come. Or he passed through the crowd because his hour had not yet come. Now, the hour. The hour is come. And he would go out to Calvary. He would go out to Calvary and there he would give his life that he might ransom you and he might ransom me. The hour is come. So Christ came at an appointed time into this world and he, and he died at an appointed time, in, at the appointed hour. Not now just days or, or a week or a month or a, a large period of time now measured in an hour and he went and he died at an expected time but more than that he died in an appointed place he died in an appointed place we read didn't we in luke's gospel on chapter 23 we read we read these words that when they came to the place when they came to the place which is called calvary there they crucified him. They came to a place at the appointed hour and there they crucified Christ. You know, there was nothing haphazard about the way in which the Lord Jesus came into this world and the way in which the plan of salvation in the heart of God has been uh, made available. There was nothing haphazard. There was nothing that was unplanned. There was nothing that was left to chance, could we say. Everything what happened exactly as it was intended to happen. And Christ came into this world to save sinners. And he died at an appointed time, an appointed hour. The hour is now come. He died at an appointed place. Do you know that before there was a planet, there was a place called Calvary. There was a place in the mind and the heart of God as he, as he knew that man, his creation, before creation had even been created, that there would be a creation that would fall. And there would be, a, there would be men and women and boys and girls that would need a saviour and that that saviour would need to die at an appointed hour. Before there was time, there was an hour in the mind of God when Christ would die. And, and before there was a planet, there was a place called Calvary. You know, there's a poet, I've got it in the front of my Bible. There's a poem and it's called The Maker of the Universe. I'll read it to you. It says this, the maker of the universe, as man for man was made a curse. The claims of laws that he had made, unto the utmost he paid. His holy fingers made the bow, where grew the thorns that crowned his brow. The nails that pierced his hands were mined, in secret places he designed. He made the forest whence had sprung, the tree on which his body hung. He died upon a cross of wood, yet made the hill on which it stood. The sky which darkened o'er his head, by him above the earth was spread. The sun which hid from him its face, by his decree was poised in space. The spear that spilt its, his precious blood was tempered in the fires of God. The grave in which his form was laid was rock, hewn in rocks that his hands had made, his throne on which he now appears, was his from everlasting years, but, not, but a new glory crowns his brow, and every knee to him shall bow. You know the Lord Jesus Christ, he came into this world to save sinners. He died at an appointed hour, and he died at an appointed place. But my dear friend, I want to tell you tonight that he died in an expected way. He died in an expected way. If you went into the Old Testament, into the book of the Psalms, you would read in Psalm 22, a little expression that says this, they pierce my hands and my feet. If you were to go back into the Psalms, you would find an expression that would say uh, <clears throat> that his back, uh, that he gave his face to the, them that would pluck off the hairs 
and, and he would give his back to the smiters. Uh, there are places in the scriptures that would tell you that his back looked like a plowed field. There are places in the scriptures that would, that would tell you of, of the crown of, of thorns and the, the, the way in which he would be betrayed and that 30 pieces of silver would be, would be the, the price for which uh, he would be betrayed. There are all kinds of prophecies in the Bible and he died in an expected way. As you would go through the gospel writers, it would be no surprise as you would consider the great planning of, of Calvary and the great planning of the, of the death of Christ. You would come across little expressions like this, that the scripture might be fulfilled, that the scripture might be fulfilled. And everything that happened at Calvary was so that the plan of God's salvation and redemption would be accomplished and be completed to God's satisfaction. So that everything that was written at full time, everything that was written in the past, Everything that was written prophesying of Calvary would happen exactly as it was supposed to happen. And Christ would die, not just at an expected time, not just in an appointed place, not but now in an expected way. But my friend, the reason that the Lord Jesus Christ died at Calvary was so that you could be saved. We said, didn't we, at the very start of our time together, as we opened the word of God, that he took upon himself flesh and blood. That he might destroy him that had the power of death, that is the devil, and deliver them who through fear of life were all their lifetime subject to bondage. My dear friend, there are so many people today, because of coronavirus and COVID and, and all kinds of things, the, there are people in this world today that have got COVID and are terrified of death. There are people that have got cancer and leukemia and all kinds of terrible diseases and blights on their lives. And they are terrified of dying. There are people that are growing older by the day and older by the year. And they're terrified and they're gripped by a bondage of the fear of death. My dear friend, I'm pleased to be able to present to you tonight my saviour the lord jesus christ there's no one else like him nobody else nobody else has died for me that i might go free so that as i look at calvary i see that on calvary though i was a sinner Though I had sinned and walked in a disobedience to God, and I had done those things that displease the Father, displease God. Well, the Savior came into the world, the Lord Jesus Christ. Christ came into the world to save sinners. And as I look at Calvary, I realize, just like that little chorus would tell us, three crosses standing side by side of broken law assigned. Two for their own transgressions died. The middle one, for mine. And this man on that center cross, he died for my transgressions. He was bruised for my iniquities, for the chastisement of my peace. There's so many scriptures that tell us why Christ died. But my question to you tonight, dear friend, is do you trust him? Do you trust him? Do you know him? Have you come to know the Lord Jesus Christ, my saviour, as your saviour? Has there been an experience in your life when, when you turned to God and away from your sins? You've repented of your sins and the things that you've done that are against God every time you've lied, every time you've stolen, every time you've had a drunken night, every time you've disobeyed your parents. Eh? <coughs> any immoral living, any of these things that are sin in our life, you turn your back on those things and you turn to God and you repent, repentance towards God and you place faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. You know, there's nobody like Jesus Christ. You can find him. You won't find him on planet Earth today as a man walking around like uh, you might meet me in the street one day or you might meet me someplace you can't meet the lord jesus christ just walking around 
like that today. But you can meet him here. You can meet him in God's book, the Bible. You can read about him in the four gospel records, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. You can uh, read about how the early church in the book of the Acts, uh, they, they, they preached the Lord Jesus Christ. Now he has gone to heaven after he ascended and rose from the dead. And you can read about how the church ought to gather. You can read so much about the appreciation of Christ and who he is and the greatness of his person in, in this book, the Bible. If you have a Bible, if you have a Bible, I urge you to take it and to read it and to find Christ in all the scriptures. There's nobody like my Savior. There is nobody, nobody to be compared with him. Amongst the sons of men, fairer is he than all the fair. And he is so, uh, it is, <clears throat> there's nobody like him. Because though he was the, in the very form of God, Yet he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Do you know, my friend, nobody humbled Christ. He humbled himself. He came down and he came low. That he might make a way of salvation for you today. Friend, if you don't know the Savior, if you've never experienced salvation, a moment in time conversion, a moment in time of placing your faith and trust in him and looking at Calvary and realizing it's all finished, it's all done, it's all pain. And my prayer tonight is that you would come and that you would trust him whilst there's still time and opportunity.